one of the most important attributes of God to man is mercy. It's not power. If you go by the power of God, and if what you are seeking is the power of God, which man actually likes power? Where power is, justice also is there. And so anywhere power is at work, what wields the sword of power is justice. It is justice that determines what to correct and what to raise up. And so anywhere you see power moving, the dictate of justice is following it. And if justice is the basis God relates with any man, he will die. Because the best of a man is like a filthy rag before God. So if justice comes before any man, you are doomed to fall. So they have to use Jesus' work to cover your own so that your own work can be acceptable. It is Jesus that did labor, but they will credit you for Jesus' effort. And so the greatest commodity a man can secure in God is mercy. As a matter of fact, mercy is the only thing God made to be new every morning so that you can never exhaust it. There will be no record that, I thought we gave you mercy yesterday. Why are you still asking for you have new mercy. The Bible says they are new every morning. Every morning. When you come again, the yesterday supply, they are not thinking what they did for you. They will still give you mercy for the day. The Bible says, I slept and I woke up because the Lord preserved me. David says it is of his mercies that we are not consumed. Mercy. Can you bow your head in where you are and ask the Lord, show me your mercy. Show me mercy. Don't let the devil deceive us. We become so full of ourselves that we begin to hold God accountable like I have done my part of the deal. Lord is remaining your part. You did not do any part. You are alive because of mercy. 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 Show me mercy. That's the most popular prayer of David. Have mercy upon me. Mercy. 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 Inside this prayer of mercy, there is healing. When you ask for mercy, God knows how to administer mercy. Inside mercy, there is prosperity. Inside mercy, there is restoration. But go for mercy. Mercy is stronger than the things. Your prayer list, mercy is stronger than it. You can dwell on mercy for two hours. Lord, have mercy. God bless the man that has received the mercy of God. Your enemies will gang up against you. Mercy will cover you. The place where other men were judged, mercy will say you will pass. When death comes against you, mercy will cover you. The strongest commodity is mercy. Go for it. Ask the Lord this night, Lord, give me your mercy. Show me your mercy. Show me your mercy. Don't get tired of contending for these things. Your mercy. Mercy. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. If you know that God will bless you tonight, can you say amen? Amen. amen. Let me start on the basis of the thing I have shared briefly. You see, we were not the first creatures of God. There was a realm that predicates our realm. And in Genesis chapter 1 verse 1, that truth is contained there. In Genesis chapter 1 verse 1, the Bible says in the beginning, God, Elohim, created the heaven and the earth. There was a reason why there was a dichotomy, a difference between heaven and earth. And in the scripture, there is a reason why heaven came first before they said earth. They said heaven and the earth. Heaven and earth there is depicting order of manifestation. So heaven was created first, then the earth. In the beginning, Elohim created the heavens first, then the earth. To show one thing, that the civilization of angels is superior in timeline than the civilization of mortals. Angels were already in form before man was created. So that even when man was created, certain angels that have clearance enough that operates around the throne and the administration is around the trinity they had some little insight into what god was designing and they were marveled they couldn't believe that god was investing so much into another creature 
and it is in such a matter that you see I want to just share briefly with us this evening in that civilization something very necessary was missing there was no mercy so it was a civilization of justice of equity it was a civilized the Bible says the foundation of his throne is righteousness and justice justice righteousness and equity no angel can do something and say it's a mistake it's a mistake is only for a creature that have mercy I am sorry it's only for a creature that have mercy no angel can say sorry if not there can be salvation for Satan the reason why the in Job chapter 1 the Bible says in the days when the sons of God were gathered Satan too was still frequenting heaven he, he came to present himself too there was there is nothing no no mercy in that lineage it was not designed for mercy and I'll tell you why they did not give them flesh so no mistake should have happened your own challenge is coming in from the flesh what happens to a creature that don't have where challenge come from so you don't have any excuse to fail when you fall it is because of the excesses of your flesh in Genesis chapter 3 verse 14 the Bible said to the serpent because you have done this dust shall thou eat for the rest of thy days and on thy belly shall thou go dust is symbolic of a particular nature of man called the flesh of man because you have done this Satan I limit you to only relate with this man on the flesh level so if you want to know where Satan will enter your life from it's from the flesh because God has limited him to only do business with man on the flesh the reason why witchcraft provokes the order of the divine so much is that man with his own will gave Satan extra access apart from the flesh so God gave Satan a benchmark and say you will only touch his flesh you will only move through his flesh but a witch say you can control me beyond the flesh so a witch can lie down on the bed but her soul will be summoned to a meeting and she can use other members of her being to go and dialogue with strange spirits and so they say suffer not a witch to live because they have given more parts of themselves more than how God allotted to Satan and let me tell you something about Satan fraternizing with other parts of you if your soul is compromised what it means is that you can be summoned without your will you can just you can just be moving those of you who are intercessors if you keep the night watches if you pray at night you will be able to discern the movements of witchcraft in your own vicinity for some people it will be a particular bed that come in a particular time and cry over some house that's a town crier the way you have a town crier going around in the village to announce that the, the king say people should gather there is a town crier in that civilization it goes around you you are only the one seeing bed the people he came for know who came and so it's a world that is full of mystery everybody is trying to pursue pillar and post car and houses but it's a spiritual world and so a witch can be physically impoverished you will look at her and pity her a wizard can be in so much disadvantage you will think that they are the ones pitying you So in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth in terms of order of manifestation. I want to share something with you. Since the heaven was created before the earth, it became clear that even in the design of the earth, there were matters, there were records that would only take shape first in the heaven before it ever manifests in the earth. So scripture says, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it already is in heaven. So in terms of manifestation of anything, this law too must be respected. You must first secure your verdict from the heavens before you expect that thing to take shape in the physical. And so this is why when they were creating man, they gave him an ability to interact with the realm where you can make things happen for first so if they put a spirit inside him in job chapter 8 verse 32 32 verse 8 rather he says there is a spirit in man the inspiration of the almighty giveth him understanding so they did not create a man since they know that he's going to be in the physical world they would have left him with his physical being but god put a spirit inside him so that with that spirit when spirits too are moving man too can go and represent himself because it is never in the blueprint of God 
that any man will be teaching another man about God. They created that all men will have access to God by themselves. In fact, the finished work of Jesus gave one permanent message to the church. The division of the veil of the Holy of Holies, the tearing of that veil is a signature that God does not want a priest to stand between him and his people again. So he wants all men to come to him directly. And he put a spirit inside man so that father to child, spirit to spirit, you can relate with God. The Bible says God is a spirit and them that will worship him, they will worship him in spirit and in truth. But what happens when the spirit of a man has not been reborn? We were born, but you were born dead. You, everybody is sleeping the sleep of Adam until a trumpet wakes you up. And Adam is asleep. He fell asleep in sin. The sin that brought him, when Adam died, Satan convinced Adam. God says the day you eat it, you will die. Satan said, you shall not surely die. Adam ate it and he did not die. And <laughs> if you can hear me, say amen. amen. They were speaking from the realm of their own, their own sphere of knowledge. What God called death is not what man will call death. And what God also called death, Satan don't understand it as death. So when God told Adam, if you eat it, you will die. Satan said, you will not die. Why? Because he has partaked of it. And he still thinks he's alive. And now man went to eat it. And man realized he became naked. Not a nakedness of a disappearance of clothes. Because he was not wearing anything from day one. I know that because when God came, the only thing God inquired, God did not say, where is your clothes? God says, who told you that you are naked? So you got information about something I didn't want you to know. So the idea has always been that as soon as this man was created, God began to fortify him with knowledge, giving him access to the deep things of God. And it became clear at some point that if man is going to fall, Satan is hoping that if man is going to fall, this one that has been designed in the image and the likeness of God, He's going to observe because he's a master reproducer. He's a pirate. He can photocopy anything. He just needs to look at the original ones. He won't duplicate it. For instance, in the Bible, the Bible says these three abound. Faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of this is love. The devil went to the labs of the underworld and he created three alternative heavy molecules to, to, to you know, portray these things that he saw as great molecules. Number one, faith is a major role, a major component for any man who wants to work with God. The Bible says without faith, it is impossible to please God. The Bible says through faith we know, Hebrews chapter 11, that the word was formed by the words of God. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So faith is the hallmark of your work with God. Something as powerful as that. Satan observed it, that there are three strong molecules, faith, hope, and love. And so he went to the underworld and he concocted alternatives. So with faith, he developed fear. So that you, you, you are either moving in faith or you are in fear. And there are too many things we call faith today that is only fear. There is a way you shout Jesus in the midst of a challenge. It is not better from faith. And without faith, it is impossible to please God. The Bible says the righteous is as bold as a lion. And for hope, he developed worry. And worry is the hallmark of what the cosmos is built around. Before you wake up in the morning, there is a fresh list of things that will keep you bothered till you sleep again. And worry is a major part of the existence of mortal men. And he choke our life with it. That is to replace hope. To make sure that you will not assess these three heavy molecules. And the greatest that they say is love. He developed lust. Lust is the, one of the most powerful principality in the rank of darkness. With lust, they just need to know what, what your own is. They don't, they don't need to know whether you have lust or not. They just, the only challenge is what is your own area. For some, they are very impregnable, you know, to lust as immorality. So God has helped them in that regard. But they have lust for power. They have lost for recognition. They have lost for material things. You can lost for money, or yet you don't have lost for immorality. In the eye of the spirit, you still have lost. The idea is not about what your own emotion and your affection is channeled to. The idea is that there is something that drives you more than your love for God. And that's what lost is. Powerful enough to become the alternative for love. 
Mind you, the Bible describes that heavy one called love as God. That God is love. And love too is so powerful in the world today. A lot of the things we do, I can tell you the truth, is molded, guided by lust. You can literally see lust even in the holy altars. Lost everywhere. A man just, you know, just, just full of lust. And there is no satisfaction of lust. The same way love cannot be overcome. <laughs> you will just continue to yearn for that thing. You will follow it until the end of your days. And so if lust cling to the soul of a man, you will find out that you... Have you seen somebody who is chained, you know, to cigarettes or alcohol or something before? The challenge, the challenge is not that he loves that thing. I have seen people who are even trying to stop but every time you give the flesh the desire it needs and you give him his ability to eat what he's asking for. Today he asks you before he eats. Tomorrow he will not ask you. He will take it. He has become stronger. But every time you obey the flesh, he gains more strength. A time will come when you will find yourself doing the things that you did not want to do. At that point, the flesh has developed muscles. It is now dictating what it wants by itself. Your spirit's opinion notwithstanding. So we began to understand, and I'm trying to share something with what I've said so far. With the scripture I have read, you know, the Bible said in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 3, he says, through faith, we know that the worlds were formed by the word of God. In John chapter 1, verse 1, the Bible says, in the beginning, was the word, that word that I just spoke about in Hebrew now. And that word was with God. And he says the word was God. Please if you can hear me say amen. amen. If John chapter 1 verse 1 says the word was God. Verse 2 says all things were made by him and without him there was not anything made that was made. They are still talking about the word. In Hebrews chapter 11 verse 3 the Bible says through faith, we know that the worlds, the nations, everything you can see, were formed by the word of God. John chapter 1 verse 2 collaborated that statement by saying, all things were made by the word. And without the word, there was not anything made that was made. I am saying all this because of the theme of our conference, the word. If all things were made by the word, in John chapter 1 verse 3, verse 2 rather, in Hebrews chapter 11 verse 3, the Bible says all things we know that the words they were formed by the word of God if we have this strong truth it means if all things were made by the word it means man of God you too were created by the word all things were made by the word it means you you were formed by the word of God and it means your building material was the word of God it means what they use to form you is the word of God what they created you with is the word and how in Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5 the Bible says before I formed thee in your mother's womb I knew you so you were already real before your father and mother even thought about knowing yourself before your father saw a lady God says you were already real and so what form were you occupying in the realm where you were with him because he says I knew you I sanctified you and I ordained you to be a prophet unto the nations if you were real already in a realm, how were you existing? The secret is in John chapter 1 verse 2. It says all things were made by the word. So it means at a point, you too, you were the word of God just like Jesus. is the word of God that became flesh. You too, you are the word of God that became flesh. And how do you know that you are the word of God? You are a set of prophecy that was described from heaven. So Jesus came into the earth to say, I must do the work of he that sent me while it is day. Which work? The work over your life is the description, the words that they describe. And when God was describing what he wanted to do, the words that God speak, they become spirit and they are alive. That was how you came alive in the spirit realm. You became a spirit. God's word created a spirit. In Hebrews chapter 10 verse 5, the Bible says, A body has thou prepared for me. So the spirit that already has been created by words 
will need a body to enter time. The family you enter is dependent on which, which description they use to create that spirit. So if they created the spirit based on, I will show my hand of power. The place you will manifest is where injustice is prevailing. So they will look for a body for you in that kind of space. So that when your spirit entered here, the expression of your own life will be in tandem, in cooperation to what they sent you inside time to come and do. So Jesus says, I must do the work of he that sent me while it is day. Because the night will come when no man can walk. So this is why I have said all I have said. They sent Jesus, who is the word of God too, that became flesh, to enter into time, to come and teach all the various words of God that entered time and forgot their identity. For Jesus to come and become the pattern song. For Jesus to come and become the reference. So that if you look at Jesus, you will remember what they sent you into the world to do. They sent Jesus to come and become, not for us, a written word. Because if you look at the way they describe him in John chapter 1, they were not saying, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Uh, uh, the same was, they were not calling the word there, it. They were calling the word him. Him, a person. You have read the word of God. It's time to know the word of God. It's time to meet him as a human being. And they did that so that anytime you don't understand what to do again, when something is spoiled in your life, even when sickness enters your body and you are feeling something is not adding up, death begins to lock around the corner. You can only correct what is spoiled by what they created you with. When a car is faulty, they take it back to factory. They take it back to where the spare part is. And if they made you through the word of God, why do you think you can repair yourself by the arm of the flesh? When your organ begins to fail, you begin to feel pain somewhere, you run back to scripture. You check. You begin to check, where can I find what can fix this challenge? So you will read until you stumble upon the place that says, I shall not die, but live to declare the works of the Lord. The day you read that hymn to yourself, your spirit man that was created by words, as he hears it, he has an ability. The Bible says, if this spirit that rose up Christ from the dead can dwell in your mortal body, he says he will quicken you, he will revitalize you. Your spirit man will hear that word and suddenly it will begin to engineer all the transformation that must happen to restore you. But the word of God is what our generation wants to stay away from. The word of God being where we came from and what can repair anything that is faulty. The word of God is considered a boring part of meeting. We meet for all nights and you know we dance, we dance, we dance and then they want to take a 30 minutes exhortation. People are sleeping. The average human being loves praise and worship in the meeting. They will dance until they sweat, even on Sunday. You just say, let us open our Bible and then you will see what Satan is really attacking. He, he like dance. That guy or dance does not, he knows that it will not move anything. He knows at the end of the day that when you are done with all of those things, the most important part of your transformation will come and fight you. Have you tried studying the Bible before? You see how hard it is? You will know there is a spirit in that book. There is not a normal... You can carry a story book and read it from morning eh, till night and finish it and you'll be enjoying it. Open the Bible and see how many things come to stop you. When you open it, your life will enter a radar immediately. They will begin to touch different areas just to make you stand up from what you are doing. Try and open the Bible and see how many thoughts will begin to bombard your mind. Many voices. Have, are you sure that window? Are you sure you close it? You know rain, rain can fall. That, that uh, singlet you dried, go and check. You will find many things. They only want one thing. Leave the world. Leave your identity. You were molded. You were created. You were formed from the world. And so if you will ever, ever I've said this and I want to reiterate it. None of us was born alive. Everybody was born dead. You were born into the death of Adam. And so everybody that will become alive in time, it is a personal decision you will take. And you are not alive until heaven here, present from the earth. So they'll be calling your name for many years. They know you have entered the earth, but they don't know why you have not activated your spirit man yet. And your spirit man will be reborn in the day you gave your life to Jesus. This is the balance of the things I'm sharing. 
Men are not taught to surrender to Jesus, yet we are prophesying over them. We are declaring heavy things and calling the blessings that are only the absolute and exclusive reserve for children of God. So you speak over people time and time again. And since they have no reference with that kingdom, they have no, no ID card. Even the angels that administer the counsel of God, when they come around, they don't know you. You are not wearing the flag of Jesus. The average man doesn't want to live consecrated, but he wants the benefit of consecration. He continues to say, he that is in me, and you are not carrying anybody. He that is in what now? Is greater, and you talk bogus things, and when thrones go to fight, you see Christians fall like chickens, because they didn't carry anything. Gone are the days where even fire had, had no power over men. They casted them into furnace. And God proved that the elements of nature does not have power. These be the men that turn the world upside down. We must start building line upon line, precept upon precept. Start with the most important. Go and secure an identity in God. And the way you do that is to return to God and say, I know I opened my eyes and they began to teach me one, two, three, and ABC. That is not the reference of life. The day you started living was the day they registered your name under the kingdom of Jesus. If that has not happened for your life, life has not started. And I'm sorry to say, you may be 40 years if you have not given your life to Christ. Your spiritual age counts as zero. It begins to read the day you came under Jesus. I shall not die but live. To declare the works of the Lord. The average Christian reads that scripture like this. I shall not die but live. To declare the works of the Lord. That the works of the Lord. Is the reason why you will not die. But we want to say that we will not die. But we are not declaring the works. Of the Lord. There is a way the system works. I'm going to conclude. With a mystery tonight. Just one. And I hope God truly opens the light of his word to us tonight. There is an intimate relationship between organisms and their habitats. Very intimate relationship. A shark is dangerous, but it is only dangerous in the water. So if you find a shark in the water, no matter how you as a human being, you are trying to swim, he, he has an ability that he's environment, his habitat, his element gave him. So if he's inside that element, you, you as a man, he will, he, will, he will bring you down because he's inside his element. A monkey is a colossus, but he's only a colossus on the tree. So if the monkey finds a way to take the fight to the tree, he will win. A fish was created to live in water. Monkeys were designed to live on the trees. Man was created to live in God. But man is not living inside his habitat. And so, when the devil comes to confront man, he lures you and says, let's be logical. Let's come down to earth. Have, have you heard this kind of talk before? If you come down, they will win you. Your, the place you live, the Bible says, he that dwelleth in the secret place, the most high. Have you seen a herbalist before? They don't live with men. They, they create their own habitat. If they ever step out, it's because they want to come and declare something. Then they go back again. Man was designed to live inside God. There was a place God was before he created the world. So if you want to truly keep sentiments aside, we want to say in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. And the average Christian says God lives in heaven. He sits down from from morning, in fact, there's no morning at night. So you just say he sits down on one golden chair forever. So we imagine one bright, old looking man with beers, white beers, and brightness flowing from the white beers, but he's sitting down on a throne. The question I have for you is where was God before he created heaven? If heaven is where we believe he lives, where was he before heaven was created? Because if the Bible says in the beginning God created the heaven, if God created something, he's older than what he created. If it was God that created the heaven, he was somewhere before he created what he was creating. Where was he standing before he started creating the heaven? Where was his leg resting on? 
What did he use to put heaven together? You will know the person I speak about. There are two locations man know. Man know the spirit world and man know the physical world. But there's a third place. It's called the secret place. And that's what the psalmist spoke about. That is why even angels don't know him. Because even in heaven, angels are calling another realm called the secret place. The apostle John says, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. It was already in the world of the spirit. But a voice came and said, come up here. There is a higher place than the spirit world. Have you heard people say the realm of the spirit is different from the realm of spirit? The realm of spirit is where witches have their conference. A herbalist too can enter there and check things and come out. All spirits can manifest in the realm of spirits. But there is another realm called the realm of the spirits. It's only God that inhabits that place. So God gave an exclusive invitation to man to not be in the realm of spirits with other spirits. He said, join me in the secret place of the Most High. If you enter that place, that was where God was before time began. The secret place. If you stay there, if you speak from that place called the secret place, the way God stood from there and spoke and things came to be, the power of your words is directly proportional to where you are standing. It is not about, you know, I want to share something very quickly. If I become the president today, suddenly my words will carry more power. It is because of the office I now stand in. Not that my voice change, the same voice, but an office has given power to my words. If we can join into God, our words will carry power. It is about location. Many of us, our dreams are full of attacks, full of nightmares, full of many things that are not, you know, the handwriting of God for our destiny. But we are waiting for the day that a great man of God will come and help us. And I am repeating it to us. That is not God's plan. God's plan is not for a man to show up and display. And then you want to, you, 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 are, you are counting and trusting God that one day, I know somebody in the agenda of God is that all men, all men will know God for themselves. That you too, you can become a strong pillar of truth. This is why the way is very simple. There is no Superman in this thing again. The era of Superman, you know, man of God, the celebrity man of God is over. We have entered the kingdom age. Where a great ministry is no longer a mighty man and a helpless congregation. It is now a convergence of dangerous Christians. That is what the end time church will become. The end time church is a convergence, a conclave of people who know God for themselves. So that you don't have to be disturbing pastor at night. Say, sir, I just, just, I just have one dream. You know? I was sharing with my friend. And you have dreams. The clearest interpretation of that dream is in the heart of the person who had that dream. But I'm amazed how people wake up and go and ask another man who did not have the dream and explain it to him. Why they're explaining it, there are details that will not be relayed by mistake. And the man will now say, hi. If you see yourself eating in the dream, <laughs> it's initiation. You have been initiated fast, fast for 21 days. <laughs> have they not placed you on fasting like that before? <laughs> the interpretation of your dream is inside your soul. That time as you are having the dream, there's a knowing. Have you found out that you can be having a dream and you know that it's a dream? Ah, it has happened to me many times. I'm in a dream and I know I'm dreaming. The only thing I'm doing, I'm paying attention to what the storyline of the dream is. So there's an interpretation that is already entering there. Before I wake up, I already know the meaning of the dream. It's just that I cannot explain it already. So the prayer I'll be praying when I wake up is a sign that what my spirit took as the interpretation of that dream is what I, I start praying with. Immediately. That's the clearest interpretation. There's a spirit in man, but he lives throughout his days as though God has not fortified him with a spirit. That spirit, I want to share something before I go. That spirit in us, most of us, the hallmark of the totality of our existence is that we lived as mortal men. The Bible speaking in Psalm 82, he says, I say unto you that ye are gods because all of you are children of the most high God. He says, but you die like mere men. Like mere men. 
there is a spirit in man. There is a spirit inside you. The way you wake up, take your bath, you know, carry clothes and wear it. As you are consciously edifying and decorating the flesh, that is how God expected that man too will give attention to his spirit. You eat three square meals to give the flesh power and energy to help him grow. But there is no intentionality about the growth of your spirit man. And so the end of a believer is a very funny outcome. A bogus flesh and a dwarfed spirit. So you see the spirit so malnourished, so lean, yet the flesh is big. And so anytime the flesh says, let's do this, the spirit does not have strength to say no. This is why men fall for temptation. Because the statue of their spirit cannot compare in terms of form with the flesh. And if you have fed your spirit, the way you eat, so there is no day that I allow food to enter this mouth if I have not read the word of God. That one is my personal covenant. If the word of God does not enter me, food cannot enter this mouth. It's a way to maintain equilibrium between the statue of the flesh and the statue of the spirit. The Bible speaking, it says, Thy words were found, and I ate them, and they were unto me life and rejoicing for my soul. You can eat the word of God. And the word of God I have been speaking about since, it will start for you first as the way. It will become the truth. Then exclusively for you, it will become life. That was what Jesus meant when he came forward and said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And that is what my last exhortation with you will be. Many of us, the only thing we know is the way. And the way is narrative in nature. The way is like an essay to explain the principles of the kingdom to us. The principles of the kingdom is communicated in the way. Jesus said he is the way, he is the truth, and then he is the life. Please, if you are following me, say amen. amen. The way is a detailed narrative of the principles of the kingdom. Let me give one example of the way. Last week, I got up from the house and I was going to go, you know, to the office and I was coming out and I realized that I didn't have change on me. So I took a bike all the same. When we got to the junction where the bike would drop me, I gave him money and he says, ah, oh God, sorry, oh, I don't have change. And something told me, don't, because he said, let him go and look for change, that there's one shop here. He said, no, just go. When he was leaving, the Holy Spirit said, observe the next time you climb bike. So during break time, I was leaving the office to go back home. I stopped the bike man, climb. We got to front of my gate, and I put my hand in my pocket to pay. And the bike man said, okay, don't worry, just leave it. Listen, the average Christian said, hey, see favor, oh, I, ne I never knew this kind of thing can happen. It did not happen by mistake. The realm is a realm of justice. Haven't you read? God cannot be mocked. Whatsoever a man sows, he will reap. He says, give, and it shall be given unto you. It's not an offering scripture. If, you, if anything you lay down is like a seed, it must come back. And I taught Jesus a few hours ago. I told somebody to go with money. Another person is paying me. He does not know. He does not know that person from anywhere. I have initiated an endless stream of miracles because this person that paid me too, somebody must pay him. <laughs> you know why you give money now, right? You are not giving because God is begging. No, never. Listen, if they ever announce a need from here and they say there's a challenge in church, eh? That is not the real reason to give. You are giving because you, want, you wanted to send something. You want to destabilize the equilibrium of the realm. So that to, to, to balance it, you will find that anything that leaves you, I can guarantee you, honestly speaking, anything you release must come back to you. Leave, give honor out and watch the way people start honoring you too. Give respect out and respect will return to you. Give dishonor and watch how and the challenge with what comes back is not exactly what you give. It's good measure, pressed down and shaking together that will return to you. Your own, you just look at you know your father and, and talk back to him as he's talking. A child is coming from you one day. 
He will teach you that yours was a joke. The realm is meant to balance itself out. When I learned that that day, I said, Jesus. So even without saying in Jesus' name, I can predict time. I can predict what will happen to me. So a young brother got a job, a government job recently. And I said, I have known the key. I went to buy him long sleeve shirts, white long sleeves, as I know he will need it. So I brought it to him. I said, take. The realm knows that I, something has left me. And they cannot, they cannot leave that space. They want to repay that thing that I have done. But when they come to give to me, they are checking your motive. Why did you give? Why did you give it? I gave it to honor somebody who got a job. I can tell you the truth by God. It works like magic. Like magic. But the devil wants you, when you see God lift your brother, the first state of heart of the average human being is, what about me? If your friend buys a car, your friend becomes lifted, the natural state of the way the human heart is, he will be interpreting his own life like a failure because another person just did well. The human heart would be better if everybody is in the same thing. But once anybody just come out small, the heart begins to feel bad. It is the normal state of every... The Bible says the heart of man is desperately wicked. So there's nobody that is outside this thing I'm describing. It takes the Holy Spirit to tell yourself, no, I'll be happy for him. If you know what was around you, when you see God doing something in somebody's space, it is the easiest place to go and rise from. You go and join yourself to his season. How do you enter his season? Go and honor him. Go and honor him. Keep your ears on the ground. The answer to that all night is already around you. It is around somebody by your side. But we don't know how to receive. Lord, my husband will not pass me this year. Your friend brought wedding card. That, that prayer you are praying, this is the answer the answer is the person that is currently experiencing that thing. You can enter their season. When you enter, you too, you forcefully enter that result. But man will be waiting that me too. It will happen for me too. And you don't know that this person, this one by your side, this is the ladder between heaven and earth. This is how you too should enter. And heaven will be looking and say, Jesus, why didn't you realize your own deliverance? Lord, the way, the way, the way you bless, you bless this man with good children. Children are not giving him headache. You, the easiest thing you should have done, go and check. Go there one day, just buy. See, these are the laws that mold the realm. And it is only found in Jesus, the way. The way things work. It's inside the way you will know the principles of the kingdom. It is the principle that Jesus called the keys of the kingdom. The keys of the kingdom is the way. The way means the principle, the operational code of the kingdom of God. But Jesus is not only the way. Jesus is also the truth. Because if you see how the way works, the way can work for both sinner eh, and unbelievers. Anybody who practice a principle, one plus one must be two. Amen. Amen. If a Yoruba man type one plus one in calculator and press equal to, it will be two. If an Igbo man type 1 plus 1, 2 and press the calls to, it will be 2. Because it's a principle. It is not a respecter of tribe. It's not a respecter of differences. A Muslim can give a Christian money and God must bless him. A Muslim can honor an old woman and long life will rest upon him immediately. I wanted crossing the road in Simbot Sabo sometime two years ago. And there was this old, old Muslim beggar, an old woman, bent, already carved. This is how she was working. Because of how slow she was working, every time a small window opens up in the road for her to run and cross, because of she cannot run. So before she would take any step, the cars would come already. And I was rushing. I, I passed. And something said, go back, hold her hands, and cross with her. I said, ah, she's not even a child of God. I've heard many stories of how is those type, those people that I used to beg, five naira you give them, 
They are the ones that will now carry the money and give for the buying of weapons. They will now use it for a jihad. So the devil was bringing all these things to my head. I went back. So I collected her boohoo. Once one dirty looking boohoo. I collected it. So I held her hand. And when I entered the road, I stopped the cars. And we crossed quiet to the middle. Crossed again to the next line. I wanted to go. The Holy Ghost says, pay her transport. <laughs> so I said, Mama, in Azad, she said, Kau. So I stopped the car saying, Kaswa. I said, Is that okay, Kau? They say, Yes. I said, How much is from here to Kau? He said, 200. I give. And I say, Mama, Kishika. The woman took one step, two steps. As she was entering the, the bus, she turned and looked at me and smiled. As she smiled, the word of the Lord came to my soul. He says, the least of your age is the end of this woman. Immediately. Somebody else is somewhere saying he will be exercising. That the secret of long life is exercise. In your exercise, your heart will fail, you will die. People are jogging and they fell down and die. Somebody said, be careful if you want to cross the road. Look left, look right, then look left. As you are looking left and right, a car will lose control and come and clear you from the safe place you are standing. People were sleeping in their house and car came and broke broke the fence and came and killed them inside. Somebody used padlock, closed the door, Kai Sakata, block it, use this thing, put, put, and he think he's safe. Then he died on top of his bed quietly. Nobody knows what killed him. So all of his security measure, he was not strong in the face of death. How do you, how do you win battles? Jesus the way. He said, your life is today. You, you secured long life. I secured it from an old woman. Have you read the scripture that says without controversy, the less is blessed of the greater. The person who is in that reality is the one that can draw you into it. Look for men who are in that season. Look for those who... Ah, her gray hair was not a joke. There was a reason. Many of her mates were dead. They say there was a, a why she has lasted this long. In penury, in lack, yet she lived long. There was a covenant somewhere. There is a code somewhere. And when I went to honor her, they shared that covenant with me cheaply. The word of the Lord looks powerless in our generation because we don't know the way. The Bible says, the labor of the foolish weary them all because they know not the way to the city. Have you found the way tonight? It, it does not end in prayer. When you are done praying, you take a step immediately. I ask the Lord, Lord, give me favor today. Open my eyes. When I'm done praying, there is no blessing that will come from God directly to you. The blessings of God will come from God through man to you. A man must help you in this world. Nobody here would be able, you know, to outdo or to outclass the help that comes through men. And so the Bible says Jesus has favor with God and men. You can have favor with God, but if you don't set your favor with man, you will be seeing great things about yourself in your dream, but it will never come to pass. Because forever, oh God, thy word is settled, but it's only settled in heaven. It's men that will allow that word to enter time through their life. You know the easiest way to live long, especially our young people here? You are my emphasis. There are two covenants. He says, obey your parents in the Lord. Honor your father and your mother so that thy days may be long upon the earth. If, if you put this one on ground, you have found the way. You are not thinking you will not die by because of luck. <clears throat> you already know that you will live. You will live long because you have done the part already. In transition seasons, when parents are about to exit time, Suddenly, Satan will create an unusual quarrel between father and sons, father and children. Have you found out that at old age, old people begin to behave somehow to give you a good reason to dishonor them? It is the trick of Satan. They will, they will begin to be unnecessarily troublesome. Be picking forth from nothing, be talking. So if you are not careful, when you open your mouth and talk back, Jesus the inheritance of the fathers, they will cancel your name from it immediately.
my grandma very active woman but in my eye I saw the way she she went from a matured person and started turning to a baby again the way a baby needs somebody to take them to go and ease their self I saw her came to that state you will take her then she will just be talking be complaining be talking be, be insulting people if you are not careful it happens in church too the generation will rise that think they know more than the elders then they'll start raising their shoulders that is why they too must dig their own well because they cannot inherit any well from the fathers and if everybody must dig his own you will not be able to do much in your generation before you die the best advantage is to stand on the shoulders of the elders and how do you stand on their shoulders they will give you their work they release it to you as a legacy take it they give only those that their heart is glad in by there are transitions going on even inside families and in the body of Christ and there's dishonor everywhere go online and see all kinds of bloggers everybody wants to correct elders say I heard this person said the Bible did this I want to just clear it today that the Bible actually means and, and a, a small boy is, is thinking is the, he, he thought he's correcting an elder the labor of that elder will be deleted from that generation I have been sharing with you Jesus the way the principles of the kingdom in the world huh? maturity is to what extent you can now develop and become independent from your parents in the spirit maturity is dependence how much you need you are always aligned to God that in the world they interpret that you are now mature as now you can stay on your own in the kingdom you are matured by how much you cannot do without God. It's an opposite concept. In the world, the way to gather, the way to become rich is to store and hide and keep. In the kingdom, the Bible says there's he that scattered and yet increases. Two opposite concepts. You know, I've shared the things I've shared because I know there are people in our midst. You know what to do now. You can, you can make the system serve you. Jesus, you can make the system serve you. It's not about prayer alone again. There are, there are steps, you know, if I do this. It's just like that one plus one. You know, if, if only one can plus one, the result must be this. These are men that can influence results. You already know. You can sit down quietly and tell people, just, just wait and watch. One of these days, you will watch my life change. Because you know the steps you have taken. It is called Jesus the way, the principles of the kingdom. You know, there are a lot of people who are thinking that the future will be better. And they are doing things the same way. And they are experiencing a different result. They are, they are rather expecting a different result. Arrogant, you know, uncultured. Some of us young people here, you don't know the last time you bought a gift and took to your, your parents. They are already aging in your eye like this. You can see it. Don't even call them. No call. Not. My father don't have to say, God bless you before God bless me. If his heart is gladdened by me, if he thinks about me with joy in his heart, there is a blessing that will flow to me. Jacob. Can I share something with you before I go? Amen. Amen. I feel like I have, I have made you guys sad. Can I share one thing before I go? I will ask you a question. Did Jacob carry anything from house? When... He was running away from house because of his brother Israel. Please. Who inherited all the properties of Abraham? Of sorry, of Isaac. Let's talk now. Who inherited all the land? Who inherited castle? Who inherited ships? Who inherited the, the, the wine and the servants? All is Esau. Jacob ran away from home with, with one cloak. But Esau was still crying and saying, You have cheated me. What was it for calling cheating? Jacob took words, words that a man spoke. 
he carried the word and ran away from home. Esau was with all the property and Esau was still crying because they knew as at then what blessing is. Blessing was not material things. Blessing was advantages that a man can put around your life. Esau knew that Jacob can gather more than these things with what is on his head. We, we want to carry material things and lose the blessing. Jesus, the way. Principles of the kingdom. And we bow our heads this night. See, our prayer this night is one. Lord, teach me what to do. Ah, he says you will hear a voice from behind you saying, this is the way, this is the way. Lord, tell me what I must do to come out of this situation. Some of you is one instruction, one. The prophet say, where did the axe fell? They pointed water. He plugged a, a branch of a tree and casted it into water and iron floated to the surface. The way, the way. There is always a secret. A secret that if it's activated, that thing that looks like impossible is one thing you can do that will open it up. The question is, Lord, what must I do? Open my eyes. Can you lift up your voice and pray this night? Open my eyes, oh God. Teach me what step I must take. Teach me what I must know. What move must I make to give me an advantage in my generation? Are you praying? Are you praying now? 